guys welcome to yet another video of core from scratch so so proud of you for showing up today we have crossed 6000 subscribers in less than 3 weeks and i really hope to cross 10k soon so please do share the video with your friends share the channel if they could also join and practice with us it will mean so much to me i'm working very very hard for this channel so today what we are going to do is we are going to talk about three questions we are going to practice and we are going to get used to writing some recursive code and after today's video we are going to talk about some really important questions of recursion which will set your basics for very hard topics like dynamic programming so without wasting any time let's get started when we started discussing about recursion what was the first thing that we saw when do we use recursion we use it when we can divide our problem into smaller problems and then we solve the smaller problems and use it to solve the bigger problems right that was the basic point of recursion and we have actually done this in a playlist in an entire playlist yes i am talking about binary search what do we do in binary search we take two points and then we divide our search space into half either left half right half then we divide it again into half in the left half right half we keep reducing our search space one by one right we are actually dividing a bigger problem to smaller problems and that is what we do in recursion also so can't we write our binary search code using recursion of course we can so let's do that see this is the first code that we had written for binary search right this is the basic binary search code now this is called iterative code in our first video of recursion we talked about this that whenever we use loops it can be like for loop by loop we are actually writing iterative code now we will try converting our iterative code to recursive code your interviewers can ask you this all the time they will tell you that convert a recursive code to iterative code convert a iterative code to recursive code so you should be able to do this okay and after this we have to discuss two more questions so stay till then okay we have to discuss this so what am i going to do i am going to start writing a recursive function so i am going to be returning int from there why am i returning int so basically we had to return some value from this function right we can either return minus 1 or return 1 so instead of that we'll return that from our recursive function only so don't worry if it's not clear it will become completely clear don't worry at all okay so i can call my recursive function anything utility function helper function search helper helper anything okay so i'm just calling it helper to keep it easy and what all things should i pass to it i am just passing the array like this in only for now to keep things simple for you to understand i am passing the integer n value the k value and what other than this do i have to pass so what values are we going to change when we reduce our search space from bigger search space to smaller search space we need the values of l and h because these are the two points between which we will be searching right so i will pass the lower and the higher values now what will i do whatever i used to do in this loop basically i will do the same thing in the recursive function so let's do that so yes we have written the code now but what is our base condition see recursive function always has to have a base condition to stop somewhere otherwise what will happen yes you are right otherwise stack overflow will happen what was the condition over here that while l is less than or equal to h so basically that means that while l is greater than h we have to return but instead of returning we also have to return something over here right so what was what did the question say the question said that if you don't find the element you return minus 1 so while we whenever we get out of this loop what were we doing we were returning minus 1 that means the element does not exist so if we have come out of a search space if we are going to stop searching that means we have not found the element so that is why i am going to return minus 1 from here so this becomes our base condition okay then we what do we do we find the middle value here instead of changing the h value what will i do i will call the helper function again and i will pass all the values accordingly array and k values are going to remain same l is going to remain same so there what was i doing i was doing h equal to min minus 1 so instead of that now i am calling the helper function again but now my h value has changed to min minus 1 so that is what i am doing right so similarly over here also i will do the same thing see i will write this over here and now instead of passing l instead of making it mid plus 1 i am going to pass l equal to mid plus 1 and i am going to pass h only because in this case it doesn't have to change and if we found it we will just return one so now instead of this code what am i going to do i'm just going to return whatever my helper function returns so i'm going to pass my array i'm going to pass the value of n the value of k and what are the l and the h values initially 0 and n minus 1 so i am going to just pass it so and i am going to remove this and now let's run it in see this was very simple basic stuff right what did i do i just converted the iterative code to recursive code how did i do that so instead of writing the while loop i am going to call the same function again 
So instead of changing the L and the H values inside the while loop, what I am doing, I am passing the new values of L and H to the recursive function because I am going to be doing the same thing again and again, right? In, in the while loop, I was actually doing the same thing again and again. So instead of that, now I have written in the recursive function. See, because inside my while loop, I was doing the exact same thing again and again. So instead of doing that, I am calling my helper function again and again with different values. Only my values are changing and I have added a base condition to stop my while loop basically. So I have added a base condition to stop my recursion. If anyone asks you the differences between recursion and iteration, you already know that we had discussed in the first video of the recursion. Go revise that. What did we talk about? We talked about how a recursion takes some extra space because we are going to be allocating some memory in the recursive stack. So when while loop was there in this, there was no extra memory used, right? But when we have written recursive code, that means we are allocating some memory in the recursive stack. So we are actually using order of an extra space now. Let's come to the second question that we are going to discuss today. Basically, we have to reverse a string. I know a lot of you will go like, this is so simple, we can do using str or we can write this code easily, but you should be able to write the recursive code yourself. So pause the video, try it yourself, or at least think about it that, okay, how will you do it? And if you're able to do it yourself, very good. If you're not able to do it, it's fine because I'm here, we are going to practice, but we need to make sure that we are used to writing a lot of recursive code because this is going to set our base. Okay, so what do we do when we reverse the string? So basically we have to swap the values of G and S, that is how we are reversing. Then we have to swap the values of E and K, then E is there, okay? The same thing we have to do. Basically here also we are taking two pointers and we are actually swapping them. After that we are dealing with a smaller problem. So because we have already swapped the values of G and S, so we have already reversed the values of G and S, then what happens? Then we have to swap only this substring. So we are actually dividing a problem into smaller problems. How? So there will be two pointers here also. There will be N and H just like binary search. How our L will move? It will move like 0, 1, 2, 3. And our H value will move from N minus 1 to N minus 2 to N minus 3. Let's write the code and see it will be clear. Don't worry. I know you're very smart. You will be able to understand. So I'm writing a helper function again or a utility function. You can call it anything. I am passing the string. See, I need to write this ampersand because I need to pass the uh, string as reference. If I don't do that, I will not be able to reflect the changes that I am making in this string and then our answer will be wrong. Okay, so this is very, very important. If we don't do this, uh, our code won't work. So then we pass two values of L and H. So we have passed two values. Then what will we do? Now we will swap the values of L and H. Okay, so we will do swap string of L and string of H. I know a lot of you will go like wicked why are you using swap? You can use temp that okay temp is equal to L, H equal to temp like that you can do it. But it's fine like I'm using this because we are what are we practicing? We are practicing recursion. We are not practicing that. You should be able to write code using swap and all. You don't have to use temp every time. Okay, you should be used to writing. And once we are done swapping L and H, what are we going to do? We are going to call our helper again for the values L plus one and H minus one. Now, what have we forgotten? See, if we keep moving the values of L and H, we will end up in what? Yes, stack overflow. So that is why what will we do? We will add our base conditions. Yes, what will be our base condition? That the L value should be less than or equal to H. When it is equal, we don't need to do the swapping. So only when L is less than H, we need to do the swapping. Otherwise, we don't need to do. So if L is greater than or equal to H, what are we going to do? We are going to return from there itself because we don't need to do the swapping. So if I don't write this statement, what is going to happen? We are going to end up in stack overflow. You should notice the details like whether we need to write the equal to condition or not. Think about it. Do we need to do the swapping when both the values are same? No. Then why do we need to go ahead? We don't. Okay. So now all I have to do is call this helper function from here string. And what are the initial values of L and H? It is zero and string size minus one, right? So I do that. And what do we have to return? We have to return the string itself. So I do this. Let's run and see. Let's submit. Another question that is very similar to this is checking if a string is palindrome or not. That is your homework because I know you will be able to do it very easily. Instead of swapping, all you have to do is you have to check whether the string value at L and the string value at H, basically the characters are same or not. And you will keep checking till L becomes greater than or equal to H. So if you are done checking till there and you have not returned false, that means you are going to return true. So I am sure you will be able to do this yourself. And also, if you have any doubt in the code that we have written now, what are you going to do? You are going to try dry running it. Okay. How are you going to do? You will see that, okay, initially L value was zero. 
and h value was say 4 then after that the next time it was called what will be the l value it will be 1 because we are passing l plus 1 and we are passing h minus 1 so what is h value going to be it will be 3 the next time it will be both 2 and 2 and that is where our recursion will stop because a value will become equal to h another thing to note over here so if we are returning from l equal to h is it ever possible that l will become greater than h if yes or not let me know in the comments you should think about it you should keep practicing drawing recursive tree recursive stack you have to do this to get your basics extremely extremely right and i will see you tomorrow tomorrow we are going to move one step ahead and we are going to discuss a very very interesting topic so do show up tomorrow okay see you.